Hello. I hope you're well. I hope you're as well as can be during very volatile and tumultuous times. <laughs> Me and a whole legion of animals greet you in love and with peace. Do you remember an old fairy tale about a naked emperor? I'd like to quickly recount it because it's very relevant for our right now moment. So basically, there was an emperor who commissioned two tailors to make some clothes for him. The tailors were frauds. They sewed nothing except for a false narrative. That false narrative said that the clothes that they had sewn were so special they could only be seen by the very wise. If you could not see these clothes, it meant you were not wise. You were a fool. So that false narrative instantly created a binary a split reality in which you either saw and admired these very fine clothes and hence were wise and accepted, or you risked exposing yourself to who knows what. So rather than immediately call out the tailor's as the frauds that they were, the emperor himself fell victim to the sham, and he became the first fool to carry on with that narrative, and everyone else in the kingdom did as well. So one day the emperor is strutting down a parade Absolutely naked. <laughs> but he was pretending, right? So he's wearing these clothes that the tailor made. And finally, out in the distance, one lone child says, Hey, that emperor isn't wearing any clothes. And the truth rang out, and the kingdom came out of lockdown. <laughs> I'm just kidding about the last part. But the first part is true. Now, this story was, it's credited to Hans Christian Andersen, but there's also talk of it being written by Aesop. Um, so I'm not sure with certainty of the author, but it was written. And many of you might be able to see the correlation between that story and now. I have been sitting with that fairy tale for over a year, and I have been wondering, what was it that got everybody to go along with the fake narrative? Why did so many pretend to see what was not there? And why were there not more voices? And when there was a voice, it was the voice of a child. So these are the questions I had been sitting with and have come to a lot of interesting, relieving, and liberating insights about it. More than anything, I want to finish compiling these things and share them with you and the world. One of the reasons that I have been so inconsistent in my communication, there's two reasons, okay, and I want to lay them on the table now. One reason has been, honestly, me wanting to navigate these times and these waters carefully, 
I don't want to create more harm. I don't want to do more damage or cause more hurt to others. And the atmosphere is so charged that you can hardly say anything without offending someone. And so it just, so that has removed the pleasantness of even communicating. You know, it's turned communicating into like dancing in a field of landmines. It's like, eh, maybe I'm going to sit this one out. <laughs> you know, who wants to blow up? So that's been one of the reasons, but the bigger reason, because that first reason is a little length after a while, like where we have progressed, where we are in our reality right now, that it's like that first reason, while I may not want to offend anyone, it's not my intent, but it's needful. It's not needful to offend anyone, but it's a risk that I need to take because of how high the stakes are. So that first reason I have, I have come to terms with. But the second reason I need help with. Your help, hopefully. And the second reason is economic. I am an independent, 100% independent communicator. So I'm not aligned with any institution or establishment. I do not receive unemployment or any kind of government assistance. If I don't earn it with my hands, I don't eat. I don't keep a roof over my head. So many people who are facing economic uncertainty, maybe you can sympathize with me because I've been surviving all this time, as I said, you know, with, without support from anywhere or anyone. So it means that I spend all of my time and energy working <laughs> as a freelancer. And it's just reached a point now where it's like having to hire out my voice to speak the words for others on their behalf. And I have my own words to say. It's become very hard to do. So the solution that I came up with was mindful merch. So I created a store. And there are some designs in there that celebrate a term known as naturalistas. These are women who, in their own way, for their own reasons, walking their own path, have come to embrace themselves as they are. This is not to shame cosmetics. I still use some. Okay, so I'm not shaming any, I'm not shaming that, but I am celebrating those who feel inspired to adorn themselves in a different kind of way. So I created some designs, particularly for the woman who has hair that makes others stare. And that might be for a number of reasons. Maybe you chose to shave your head. Maybe you chose to let it go bright white, silver platinum. Maybe you let the curls and the kinks and the coils just rise up in the humidity. Locks, braids, afros, birds' nests, frizzy mess, twists, your beautiful natural hair. Whatever your definition of free hair is, if your hair makes others stare, then you just might enjoy these designs I've created. And by purchasing any of them or by sharing the store with others, you may know that you are directly supporting my ability to communicate helpful truths. Please help me free my voice and free my time to say the words that were put on my heart to share with you. Because the truth is, I am just like that child. I want to say and show the emperor's nudity, 
the emperor's nakedness. But I can't do that while also doggy paddling as a solopreneur just to keep the lights on. That's the truth. So I'm not asking you for a handout. I'm asking that you take a look at these designs. If you like them, buy them or share them with your naturalista free hair wearing friends. Thank you.